since most of this year we, we've been, um, I guess, pro Rio and BHP in unison um, for most of the 17. So it's an important time to revisit them given that's now changed and I'm, I'm back on, on board with um, pro BHP over, um, over Rio. Uh, the first chart you'll see just the heavy underperformance BHP has had and obviously that might give you more confidence in Rio but to me it's all about what's priced in <coughs> and my preference for buying shares when they're cheap not when they're, um, when they're pretty popular. So I attribute the difference in their performance mostly to the differences between what the oil price has done this year and the alley price. So um, you'll see there on the chart, the next chart that um, I've got the share price performance of both Rio and BHP uh, overlaid with um, the aluminium price and the oil price. And what you'll see is an extraordinary correlation they have with, um, with those two commodities. And, and what are they to each of the businesses? Both of them, uh, for both Rio and BHP, iron ore is by far their largest division. And uh, second to that for Rio's aluminium and second to that for BHP's oil. So what you typically get with most global investors or, or big the big end of town is that they typically trade them on the um, understanding that iron ore neutralizes between them, and, and then you've got their next biggest division driving um, how these big investors think about them. So that's very important, obviously, given how weak the oil price has been lately, and uh, and to me that's driven most of the underperformance. Uh, so what do we think about oil? I know I'm I'm well known for being bullish on the oil price, and um, and and particularly so at the moment. What's driving that um, contrarian call at the moment is the fact that we've had a real record surge in, in net short positions in the futures markets. Uh, it's been my view over the last six weeks that that's been driving the real strong bout of weakness we've had in the oil price. And, um, and where, it, where it might you know, in, initially seem as a negative indicator, when it sort of reaches those peak levels, what you can get in reverse is as, uh, any upside move in the oil price, which we've seen over the last few sessions, you can then see a lot of pressure come on those shorts and if they start to close and, and um, go back to a more neutral balance, then you can get a, a, a double kicker on the way up for, um, for whatever that underlying security is. So in this case, the oil price. So with um, the short positions now at a record high um, and really oil, oil market fundamentals continuing to improve, uh, US production is increasing. I know that's, that's definitely something that people focus on and it's true, it is increasing and, and it isn't likely to go away. But at the same time, there's more than enough um, demand growth across the global market. World GDP is still supportive of, of positive growth in commodity consumption and um, neutral or, or, or balancing production from elsewhere, uh, for me, to, to compensate for that extra production from the US. So, yeah, so positive view on oil. Then when you put the businesses actually next to each other, you actually see a stark difference in the way they're spread across markets. Not, not just in the commodity markets, they're spreading outside of iron ore and copper, but also just in the weightings they have. So for Rio, overwhelmingly there, you'll see that EBITDA, almost 75% of it is driven by iron ore. And that, to me, is an overweight position, um, well beyond what you would hope for, for a global major in terms of um, just giving you security or confidence around the continuity of earnings throughout the cycle. Given how much bulk prices can move uh, with real conviction, that will obviously, um, obviously reflect well on the company over the last 12 months where the iron ore price has been healthy, but, um, but does leave me a little bit concerned um, when, when it can become quite choppy. Whereas BHP, where you've, you've got four different divisions all contributing um, over 15% to EBITDA, that's, that's much more balanced. And I know that um, activists like Elliot will, will argue that diversification is a waste of time for miners and, and better left to investors. But for me, when we're, in, we're investing in businesses as retail shareholders, I'm more interested in, in those businesses that are diversified because it gives them an earnings cushion, cushion under the business that aren't correlated to one another. So it just does make it more defensive in my view. And, and also with BHB, drilling in on that one in particular, there is this real big um, uh, franking credit balance that has a mass now in the business. Um, you know, it, it does come across in the press at the moment as a negative factor, but it's actually a strong positive. There's roughly $2.60 worth of franking credits built up in the business with earnings really recovering strongly this year and, and seeing no reason why that won't continue, it does leave a, a strong avenue for the company to, um, to start to accelerate the distribution of those franking credits. So that just gives an extra kicker to the yield and really underpins their uh, optionality between increasing dividends or off-market buybacks, both of which I think BHP will do. And finally, activism is a good result. Uh, I think will result in some good moves from the business. Um, we're really seeing that come through now. BHP's commentary to the market starting to shift on their shell assets and starting to show signs that they might consider actually selling them. Uh, that, that's a real positive for me, um, given the fact that um, 
Elliott valued the, the, the US onshore assets at $22 billion, which is more than twice, almost three times, where, um, where consensus value them. And um, obviously, um, what we're interested in is value for shareholders. So if they can unlock anywhere near that price, I think it's going to be a strong value um, creator. When you look at what Rio's share price has gained from um, the talk of divesting their coal and allied business for $2.5 billion, um, it'd be phenomenal for shareholder positivity if um, BHP could offload these unpopular assets for $22 billion or 10 times that amount. And obviously, with free cash flow in FY17 uh, of, of $7.5 billion, uh, sorry, $10.5 uh, you've then got um, extra uh, proceeds of 22 That'd be phenomenal in terms of what they can do buyback and, and capital return-wise. So with that, I'll wrap up. But, yeah, just uh, once again, that underperformance in share price has given me confidence that, um, that our price target of just over $28 for BHP is good buying at these levels, and uh, I don't think that underperformance will remain in the second half of this year.